Oh, so I would have been happy if Dr. Karunanidhi should have been here. He's not there. Please, someone call him. He thinks that it's everything is sulfonylurea, right? In, in the entire planet, it is sulfonylurea. Gentlemen, your age is 70 years. We are in an era of change. And you would be perhaps thinking that, is it a new statin? Let me start by saying it is better than a statin. Note this point, and I will prove you. Through the science, no anecdotes but the science. So let's look at the evidence which we generated in past 12 years. Remember, the first uh, ZLT2 was approved in 2012 in the United States. It was canagliflozin. And in 2013, the first uh, EMA approved as ELT2 was dapagliflozin. So we are 10 years down the line. What did we learn in 10 years? And you, you must remember certain facts. So this is the entire story journey of a ELT2 inhibitor in past 10 years. So the drug was actually approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, but the drug was found to lower body weight and systolic blood pressure significantly significantly into the tune that if you look into a GLP-1 versus a GLT-2 head-to-head trial, the GLT-2 was never inferior in reducing blood pressure and body weight. That's very fascinating. However, the entire landscape changed in past 10 years. So what has happened is the last four point bullets. So we had five cardiovascular outcome trials as mandated by USFDA in 2008 that all new anti-diabetes drug has to pass through a strict cardiovascular outcome trial which sulfonylurea metformin never went. Okay, so be mindful of when you are talking about SUs and metformin. If they would have been went through this trial, sorry, what happened? They would not have passed. Now, so I will, I will not bring SU and metformin into the debate. So what happened in these five cardiovascular outcome trials so far done with a ZLT2 inhibitor? This is a BG slide, no need to read. Here is the five CB outcome trial, which you can see starting from Imparig to Canvas to Declare Timi to Vertis CB to a score trial is with Sotagliflozin. These are baseline similarities and characteristics we wrote very recently to understand if you are CB outcome interested guys, you can download it right away, it's a free of cost PDF. What I'm trying to allure you to look here is, that look here, in all these five CB outcome trial, one thing was pretty common, and it was never failed, was the reduction in heart failure hospitalization. See, that is into tune of almost 35% reduction in hospitalization due to heart failure. It's not a joke, it has never happened in the past. I'm not going to 3 PMS, some showed benefits, some didn't, etc., etc. But the one thing was common in all these trials that all these trials conducted in patients with type 2 diabetes, there was a significant reduction in heart failure hospitalization. You know what is the reward they got? This is the current ACC AHA guidelines. The ZLT2 is the only drug in planet which has been given a level of evidence 1A for the primary prevention to reduce heart failure. Here is the statin. Statin has got a question mark on primary prevention only in diabetic sets, remember. But for a ZLT2 inhibitor, you can see here, this is grade 1A evidence. You have got a license to use to prevent heart failure hospitalization. Okay, so that was the message from five cardiovascular outcome trial. Then people said, oh, well done, you reduced the heart failure, means you prevented the heart failure in a patient with type 2 diabetes, regardless of the baseline cardiovascular background disease. Why don't you conduct a trial in a patient with known heart failure? Show me the evidence that you can prevent heart failure in a patient who had a history of heart failure or who had an active heart failure. Show me this evidence. So, so far, four heart failure trial has been conducted in patients not only with diabetes, but without diabetes as well. What happened? And these are these five CB outcome trials done in patients with known diagnosed heart failure. A ranging of ejection fraction from 25% means severely reduced ejection fraction to a normal ejection fraction. These are the trials. So lowest heart failure trial had 25 to 60, including acute heart failure. 
So these are the five outcomes trial. Delivered top line result is already available. This trial will be presented details at the EESD this year. So we have got results from four the trial. What happened in this four trial is in front of you. BG slide, no need to read. Look at the primary outcome of these heart failure trial. And here is the result that in all these trials, they came with a flying colors. There is not a single trial done with a ZLT2 inhibitor in patients with heart failure where it was neutral. It's shown a significant reduction. Net result, the world rewarded a ZLT2. Where is Dr. Karnanidhi? Let him see. This is a grade one class A evidence. This is a proof. Okay then. Now let's come to the third bullet point. This trial was also done in patients with a preserved ejection fraction. Why I, you know, separated this data? Because the ZLT2 inhibitor is the only drug that has shown in the history of pharmacological science that has shown a significant reduction in cardiovascular death and heart failure composite in patients with a preserved ejection fraction heart failure. And that was the Imperer preserved trial. If you look back into all the previous trial done with several drugs, be with the ARBs, uh, be with uh, ERNI, you can see this re these drugs also reduced, but none of them were statistically significant. If you know ABC of the statistics, none were significant. In contrast, if you look here into the Imperial preserved trial, this is the only significant p-value in all the trials done with patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction including ERNI, top cat with a spironolactone. You can see this AC inhibitor trial, CHARM, with Candy Sarton. They did reduce to some extent, but it wasn't a statistically significant. As you can see, even the CHARM was not significant. To be called as a significant, it has to be less than 0 0.05, not equal to. So basically, none of the heart failure preserved ejection fraction trial with any pharmacological agent till date has shown a significant with a persuasive p-value of 0 0.0003, remember. And therefore, uh, the ACC AHA rewarded them that use a ZLT2 inhibitor in patients with heart failure, regardless of ejection fraction, regardless of whether patient has got a diabetes or not. And this is the current uh, level update for uh, ZLT2, even for the heart failure preserved ejection fraction, they have been given 2A. Now you might be asking why is it 2A? Yeah, earlier it was 1A because this has been done based on only one trial. There is a rule of game to give this indication. If you have passed in only one randomized controlled trial, you will be put here as 2A. Wait for the deliver result, it will jump to the 1A again. Wait six months down the line, you will see in the next ACC 2023, this will be 1A. Where is the evidence with the statin in these patients with heart failure? Please note that the statins doesn't work in patients with heart failure where you have got a 1A class for a ZLT2 inhibitor. Chalo, let's look into the third point, kidney outcome trial. So far we have got three kidney endpoints trial. Uh, Imparinal result is not here, but top line is positive. Remember, the ZLT2 trials are historical in the sense that these trials were stopped prematurely because of excess benefit. The ethics committee did not allow trial to continue because if you know that drug A is working good and saving patient, you cannot allow the trial to continue on drug B, which is placebo. This is ethically and morally not allowed because you are denying the benefit by giving drug, not giving drug A and rather than giving a placebo drug, even in a randomized control trial. So the rule of game is that if you have got a trial, where the drug is showing benefit against the placebo, stop the trial. And a ZLT2 inhibitor is perhaps only, uh, you know, anti-diabetic drug or rather any pharmacological agent where their heart failure trial was stopped prematurely because of excessive benefit. Their three kidney outcome trial starting from the credence to the DEPA CKD and now imparinal, all the three trial was stopped prematurely because of excess benefit. Remember, in the past, all previous CB outcome trial was stopped because of either failure or harm. Here, all the trials is stopped because of benefit. Now, if you see these DKD trial or this is DEPA 
it consists of even a non-diabetic CKD. And for the first time, we learned that we have got an agent for the treatment of diabetes that can prevent kidney disease in a patient without diabetes. Isn't it a, is a miracle what has happened? Still you are denying the drug? This is the result. And you know the top line result, impact kidney is already top line result, came in 16th March. This, again, the detail, detailed data will come in forthcoming ESD. Now, to the extent, if you see the KDGO guideline, which is 2023, this is not yet come into effect. This is a draft which was proposing that if you have got a patient with diabetes and kidney disease, and if the EGFR is more than 20, you must use metformin with a ZLT2 inhibitor. Must. And then, suppose if your EGFR comes down, don't stop the drug. People forget to read all those bottom lines in KDGO guideline. What they are saying, that it is reasonable to continue as ZLT2 even if EGFR falls below 20. This is the quantum of benefit with a drug which was contraindicated three years back if the EGFR was less than 45. Now you are saying go to, even though it comes to less than 20, unless patient is going a renal transplantation, continue the ZLT2. Isn't it a, something new which we are learning? Finally, People said, oh, so you passed in heart failure. Do you have any trial in patients who are in ICCU with a ventilator and try the ZLT2? See the situation. Who has tried in this situation any drug? But a ZLT2 has been undergone a trials in a patients with a decompensated heart failure. You will be surprised. You may not have heard this data. Look at these trials. And why this trial was, you know, conducted? Because if you look these three trials, you can see DEPA heart failure, impera reduced and impera preserved. The benefit for the heart failure hospitalization was seen as early as day 12 here in the impera reduced, day 18 in impera preserved, and day 28 in DIPA heart failure. So the benefit is so quick that people realize, oh man, this can be a wonderful drug in acute heart failure. Why don't you try it? So they tried it. And here, so this, that's my point. The beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. Dr. Corona, they can't see it. Very simple. Where is he? So this is the point. Now, so they tried in acute heart failure. And these are the mammoth number of trial right now undergoing in patients with acute heart failure. Decompensated heart failure on a 6 liter of oxygen and they are given a ZLT2 inhibitor. You can see starting from impulse, DEPA act heart failure dictate these two trials right now on. The impulse is already passed. I will show you the result. These are the ZLT2 trials and these are other you know, drugs, uh, you know, in patients with acute heart failure. So what happened in these trials? These, these are ZLT2 trials. I will not bore you. Look here in the final. When the ZLT2 was started in these trials, so soloist heart failure trial was done in a patient who those were admitted with decompensated heart failure, but the ZLT2 was started when patient became stable, right? Whereas in the dip, this IMPA response and in the impulse trial, the patient were acute heart failure, still decompensated, you know. Uh, so they started the drug in the first 24 hours of the admission. So patient was admitted in the morning, a ZLT2 was given on the same day. So this is, this two trial is a acute decompensated heart failure. And here is the result. You can see although these trials were of shorter duration, they achieved something which is positive. They did not do any harm. You might be, be surprised to see someone is on a 6 liter oxygen with acute renal shutdown. A ZLT2 has been given because of acute heart failure. You expect DKA, hypoxia, etc., etc. But look what happened. And this is the, if you combine the data of this three acute heart failure trial, you see there is a significant benefit in all the endpoint. What about side effect? Look in the right hand side. Nothing. Absolutely neutral, insignificant. Whatever side effect you would like to look here, fine, it was absolutely fine. Now then, so to summarize the entire story and bringing back to the story of statin, this is a, a ZLT2 program. If you have got a patient with diabetes and is still having a normal ventricular function to go to someone whose heart is gone and perhaps need a heart transplantation, you have got a trial. There is not a single trial from this where a ZLT2 did not sound benefit. And simple, now you can ask me what was the actual advantage. So that's why I have put it here, the number needed to treat to see these patients. 
starting from the declared timi which has a majorly primary prevention cohort in declared timi it was 70% only 30% had cardiovascular disease and then if you keep on going to canvas to bertis to impare credence depa ckd imperial preserve depa hf imperial reduced went there look at the nnt the nnt is coming from 400 to 125 to 59 to 36 to 10 what does this graph shows the graph suggests that if your patient is sick the zlt2 gives you a life here is the drug that prevents your life even if you don't have heart disease two you have got an advanced heart disease see the nnt number needed to treat is only 10 so if you give 10 patient one patient will survive that's the beauty of SGLT2 in it. Do you know the NNT of a statin? Any one of you? Okay, fine. Fair enough. So you are very close. So statin's NNT is here. Look at the NNT of SGLT2 inhibitor. You are saying, is it a new statin? It is better than a statin. And finally, I did not say. Oh, Dr. Karunani is not here. Sir, I didn't say. Who said? The father of the cardiology in the world. Uh, and you may not accept that uh, I am uncle, but uh, he is a real father, right? So he said that SGLT2 is the statins of 21st century. Who am I to tell you it is not? Someone said it. I said yes, but I said even beyond Bronbald because I am is basically in the age of his son because I looked like and compared. I said perhaps it is better than a statin. I went beyond the father figure. And why I'm saying it, because perhaps Dr. Bronbal did not realize that the statin doesn't work in patients with heart failure. Neither it works in a patient with CKD. Please remember, there is only one trial done with a statin in a patients with CKD. It's called 4S trial, done with a torvastatin. People thought that a statin will prevent cardiovascular death or cardiovascular endpoint in patients with CKD. However, the 4S trial was stopped prematurely because of excess harm. Can you believe this? And what was the harm? It increases the ischemic hemorrhagic stroke. So the statin, in, the torvastatin increases stroke in a patients with CKD, whereas a ZLT2 reduced everything in patients with CKD. The statin is contraindicated in a patients with advanced heart failure for several reasons, whereas a ZLT2 so new benefit in all acute heart failure trial. So ladies and gentlemen, my suggestion is that SGLT2 is far better than. So it is not provocative. It is super provocative to tell you that SGLT2, if we do not recognize today, one year, two years down the line, you will find that this statement will be rather changed. And even Brownball would like to write that it is better than a statin. Thank you very much for your patience listening.